I want to talk about the first Christmas gift ever wrapped. I mean, I like gifts. Anyone like gifts in the house? Yep. Oh, yep. You like giving? Yes. Now, that's the churchy part. Do you like receiving? Yes. That's the honest part. <laughs> For God so loved the world, the Word says, that He gave His only begotten Son. And the reality of all God's creation is the heart of God to give. The heart of God to, to make alive. And the very first Christmas gift wrapped, we find in Luke 2, 12. And the word says that Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. What a gift. And what a wrap. And the power of that gift came in a very, very unusual way. And as a matter of fact, the same way the gift came is the exact same way in which God is going to be revealed today. Now the Word says, well, let's read what the Word says. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Or in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Everything is connected. Everything in your life is connected. And if you, you do that, that one thing and just trust and believe that your steps are ordered of the Lord, just that one thing will change your life for the rest of your life. And the Word says, all things were made through Him, Him being the Word, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Everything God does, He does through something. And in the, in the beginning, in the beginning, in the genesis of time, God did something that is fascinating. He created mankind. He created you and I. He created humanity. And then he gave us his word, and he told us to do something, and if we did it, he said, I'll give you dominion over the, all the earth. And that one thing was honestly really simple, but it was a change. It changes your mind. It changes everything about you. It changes your chemistry. It changes your attitude. He said, keep my word. And no matter what, just keep my word. What I say is what I say, and keep my word. And when Jesus was born... The same thing happened. God did it again. God made his word flesh. Now, Adam in the beginning was God's word made flesh. God spoke, and there he was. And the word of God became flesh. And the scriptures call Jesus the last Adam. It says the first Adam was a living soul, but the last Adam was a quickening spirit. And the Word says when Jesus came, He didn't come looking like an angel. Keep in mind, He didn't come looking like God. Right? What does God look like? What does God look like? And why would, why, why would God come? Why would the Word come in the flesh? I mean, it seems like the flesh is so fallible. It's so easy to be thrown off course or to be deceived or to get discouraged or to disbelieve. Why would God choose something so temporal, so sensitive to everything around them? And yet the Word says that the Word became what you're made out of. The Word became flesh. And when, when you condemn the creation of God, meaning you say things like, we've heard this before, I'm only human, I'm not perfect. I'm imperfect. The world isn't perfect. You're missing the whole point. The whole point is God created man in his image and in his likeness. And the image and the likeness of God wasn't just a shape. The image and the likeness of God was literally someone that believed what God said and acted on it by faith. And he said, when you do that, when you act on what I have said by faith, he said, you'll have power that you don't know you have. And you do. You have power you don't know you have. You have power to be happy all the time. You have power to feel like singing all the time. 
You have power to be joyful. You have power to have things come your way. Jesus said, this is, you don't have to make things come your way. Jesus said, if you would seek my kingdom, he said, things that I've already determined for you, he said, they would hunt you down. Well, why did God do, why would God do that? And here's, here's something else. Wouldn't it seem easy? Philip says to Jesus one day, wouldn't it be easy if God just showed up? If you could just see God, I mean, then you could believe, because that's the point, right? To believe God. So why not just show up? Why couldn't God just show up so he could take a look at him and then go, he's God, and then everybody in creation just serves him? And that's not like a good idea. Now, here's the problem with it, is that it takes faith. God determined after he created Adam that everything he would do from that point on, he'd do it through flesh. Isn't that amazing? Everything he'd reveal, the heavens move, the glory of the Lord come down, heaven and earth being united, he said, I'm going to do it through that body. And so he goes to Abraham and he tells him that he's going to do something that neither Abraham nor Elizabeth is capable of doing. You're going to have a son. But this isn't just any son. This son is a representation, number one, it's, it's Abraham's theme, it's his song, it's his honor, and it's a huge statement. This is your son. But when God talks to Abraham, just like God tells you things, and you say, I don't have what it takes, and I don't have enough to pay for it, and I don't know where I'm going to get it, and if I do do all those things, I don't know if anybody's going to buy it. And in anything that we do that gives us a hope of joy, it always puts you in a place to your uncomfortable being. And this isn't our doing. This is the doing of God. Because he didn't leave anything undone. And he said, I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. But the scriptures say something really amazing. It says that God hid himself. That God hid himself. And he is only revealed through his word. And who is his word? His word is Christ. But it just seemed like if God would just show us, then we could all look at him and we could believe. And we'd say, there he is. There's God. It seems like God could, I mean, couldn't God, couldn't God just like appear? I mean, what would he look like? It wouldn't work because Jesus, the word says, one day he's there and Philip comes to him and says, show us the father. And Jesus says, how long are you going to be looking at him? How long do I have to be here? How long do you have to stare at me and not know who I am? The word says he was God in the flesh. But the body wasn't the body of an angel. The body was your body. But it's the perfect instrument to do what God wants to do. It was exactly what God designed, and the Word says the plan, the plan was that the hidden mystery of Christ would be revealed through His church. I mean, doesn't it seem mind-blowing that God would say, this is how I, the invisible God, the, the, the God Almighty, this is how I'm going to be seen. I'm going to be seen through creation like this. I can imagine heaven going... I don't understand. What is this? And the scripture says, says what, what is this? Yeah, that's what the, book that the book said that, right? Yeah. That you're mindful of him and that you visit him. I mean, why do you visit them? Yeah. What is it? They, they, they don't even believe they can do what you tell them they can do. And they can't see you. They run from your presence. They think about everything they've done that they shouldn't have done. And they're always wishing they could do what they can't do. But the reality is, is that's God in you. God's wanting you to do what you can't do. It's like he did Abraham. God's wanting you to do. Oh, and then who else was it? He came to, uh, he came to uh, Zachariah and he said, you're going to have a son. Your wife is going to bear a son. And he said, well, and again, why does it seem like God always tells us to do what we just can't do? And we're driven to do it. 
And then God says to Zechariah, he said, your, your wife is going to have, and he said, how is this possible? He said, we're both too old, just like Abraham. And Elizabeth was too old. Then he, let's switch back a little, further, a little more ahead. Then he goes to Mary and he says, you're going to have a baby. But you're never going to come together with her husband so it can be done. But nonetheless, you're going to have a baby. And she says, how is this possible? And he said, with man, it's impossible. Okay, this is, this is what he's called to be manifest through. God himself says, with you, it's impossible. Isn't that amazing? God bless you and good night. It's impossible. But God's divine order, the word says, the plan was that the mystery of the invisible God would be revealed through humanity. Through people that God knew because he created the time and space because time and space didn't exist until God created the world. It just wasn't there. There was no such thing. God has no beginning. He has no end. He's the everlasting one. And there has to be an everlasting one or there could never be anything. Somewhere it had to stop beginning and it just had to be. And that's God. But when he created mankind, he created boundaries. He gave you boundaries. Not to keep you from them. Not to keep you back. Not to fence you in. But so you could see that you could go beyond them. Not by might nor by power. But by what he sent into the world, by my word, says God. God showed up and people looked at him and they couldn't see him. And I'll tell you why. Because your eye cannot see God. You can look at him, but you can't see him. You can't know him. And your mind can't understand him. And here's the problem. If God showed up and your mind can't figure out why, then it's always going to question If the mind cannot rationalize something, then it's going to doubt it even if it's looking at it. And the reason we can't see God is because He's beyond explanation. And if your mind can't explain it, even if you're looking at it, you're not going to believe it. And God's saying, I want to show you something that is beyond explanation, beyond your boundaries. I want to reveal something to you. And not only am I going to reveal it to you, I'm going to do it right through you. You are what I have chosen to be revealed to in the earth and in heaven. Because you have boundaries. Because you can't do it. Because you're too young or too old or too slow or just too lazy or just too tired or just too broke or just too sad. Or just too unloved, or just too uncared for, or you're just not smart enough. Because the whole power of the mystery of God is concealed in the one that was born in Christ, and he came in the flesh. And the word became flesh. Why? Because God is beyond comprehension, he's beyond figuring out. He's beyond reason. God is unreasonable. You can't reason it out. You can't figure it out. So if he came and we looked at him, we'd still doubt him because the word says he did that. The word says he came and he dwelt among them and they saw him and they knew him, but they didn't know him as God. How can you look at someone who's doing signs and wonders and miracles? You ever wondered why the people of old could hear God thunder and see an, an image and still doubt that it was God? You ever wondered why? Because if the mind can't reason it out, it's going to question it. Because God is beyond reason, and reason is all humanity knows. It's got to make sense. Somehow it has to come together. Somehow it has to make sense. So God says, I'll do something else. I'm going to send you prophets. They're going to say things that are impossible. They're going to say things. They're going to see things you're not going to see. But the whole point is, is I want you to believe me. I want you to see me. Your eyes can't see. Your mind can't believe. But your faith can. Your eye can look at God but still not see God. But your faith can. I believe in the only begotten of the Father. That's what salvation is all about. 
Salvation isn't where you came from, what you did or didn't do, or how well you think you are or you aren't going to do. It's about doing what he said. He said, you're dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. I don't know if anybody's even hearing what I'm saying here today. I can't believe you're still sitting in your chair. If we look at God, if he appeared here tonight, you'd still doubt him. But because you couldn't reason it out. And if you can't reason it out, you'll doubt what you can't reason. Because God is beyond reason. He's beyond figuring out. He's beyond looking at and identifying. He has to be revealed. That's what Jesus meant when he said to Peter. He said, well, who do, who do I say that I am? And everybody's given their own opinion. And Jesus, Peter says, I know who you are. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, right there. That's what my church looks like. Somebody that couldn't possibly know why you're saying what you're saying, but you just know. You know. Knowing who I am without being able to see me, because Peter, you see me in the flesh, but you don't see me as God. But you just said, I am God. You just said, I am the Holy One. Simeon knew. He knew when they brought Jesus in for the day of dedication. He knew. He didn't know anything except when he saw him, the Spirit of the Lord. The Word says the Holy Spirit was in him. And as soon as he saw them by the Spirit, he said, blessed are you. You guys are blessed. You're blessed parents. This is the one he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I can die. Can you imagine seeing something, seeing seeing God by the By the faith of God, because of why? The Word. The Word. The Word. God said, in the beginning, God said, let us make man. What was man made out of? The Word. Who is Jesus? The Word. Who are you? The Word of God. The Word can see Him. Jesus said, I'm the only one that can see the Father. And if I be in you and you be in me, if I am in you and you are in me, you're going to see God. You know, you're not going to have to see him with your eyes. You'll see him in such a far deeper way. You won't doubt. You won't reason. You know. You know. I know. And that's why the word says, I know in whom I have believed. And Jesus said, Peter, the same way that I came is the same way I'm going to be revealed. I came in the flesh, revealed by the Father. And the the exact same way today, Jesus is going to be revealed through the body, through, through, through this vessel, because we can't reason him out. So it has to be by the revelation of Christ within me. Christ in me, that's the hope of glory. And when I don't reason it, then I'm not going to doubt it, and God is going to do beyond who we are. Because he is beyond explanation. He is a gift wrapped for you. The first Christmas gift ever wrapped was Jesus Christ wrapped in swaddling clothes. A gift. Not something that we, we have to, 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 to feign for. Not something we have to, to try to get. Not something we, we, we work for. Not something we fight for. We don't have to ever fight. You never have to fight another devil in your life to serve and please God and walk in victory. Not one single time. Not one. Not one. Not ever. Because if any of it is, any of it, any of it is by works, then you're going to have to do it the rest of your life. And guess what? It's never going to be enough because you're always going to be trying to reason out what you see. And when you don't have to reason out what you see, but you see by faith, then you're never going to doubt what God has said. And if you do, Christ is going to be revealed in you. And isn't that the point? Christ in you. The hope of glory. The manifested Son of God. Let, let every demon in hell do a party dance around you, and it just doesn't make any difference because they're hopeless, they're helpless, they're powerless. And they have nothing to do with you. And if you walked over a million of them and they all fell out, it wouldn't mean a thing. It wouldn't make you any more righteous than saying, Jesus, you are the Christ, you are the Son of the living God, and I know who you are because your word is alive inside of me. He said his word, and that's what heals you. You can fast, and you probably should. I mean, I should sometimes. Not because I need to get closer to God, but it doesn't matter. But the point is, it's not by the efforts 
or the condition of our doing is to simply the believing I know who you are. You are the Christ. You are the Son of God because the Word said so. Every time God did anything from the time He created time when He made man, everything He did after man came on the scene, He's done through man until this present day. Today, God is still doing through you. Everything that's going to take place is not going to happen. I don't expect to see the clouds break open because we're in trouble because that's just not what's going to happen. God bless and good night. He's not coming to get you out of trouble. He's not coming because we're in trouble. He's coming because the Word of God is making Him so visible in us that you can't doubt Him. The very thing, Philip, how long do I have to be with you? You've been looking at me. You've been eating with me. You've been listening to me. How long do I have to be with you before you know who I am? Because he said what we'd like sometimes. God, if you just show us. Show us the Father and it'll be enough. Just show us God. I mean, it seems to just show us God. You've done all these wonders. And Jesus said, I have been. And you still don't know who I am. If God did it your way, you'd never know who he is. But when he does it his way, you do. Your eye can't see him, but your faith can. You'll never be enough. You'll never work hard enough. You'll never do enough to be able to see God. But God is being seen through you. This is the greatest season of your life. You're going to have to. God wants you to give up a few things, though. He wants you to give up chasing devils because when the disciples said, hey, we're excited that they're, that, that, that they're, they're subject to us, he said, yeah, because they're powerless. Let's talk about something that has to do with power. He said, I don't want you to rejoice because of that. I've already seen him fall like lightning. He fell from power, and he's powerless, hopeless, and lifeless. But you aren't. He said, I want you to rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what I want you to get excited about. God, my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. And say it. Tell somebody. He said, now when the Holy Spirit comes on you, I want you to, to be a witness for me. I want you to go and tell everybody you're saved. Just go declare, I'm born again. I'm born of the Spirit of God. Number one, get over yourself. Get over your doubt. Let your ear hear your mouth say, I'm born of the Spirit of God. I know you are the Christ. I know you are the Son of the living God. I, I, I could never imagine needing to see you with my eyes in order to explain you to my mind because you are beyond explanation. So that would never work. It's already happened, and it didn't work then, and it wouldn't work now. But Peter, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Jesus said, that's what I'm talking about. And let me tell you something more, Peter. You didn't figure it out. You didn't dig for it. You didn't work for it. You didn't study for it. Knowing who I am came from the Father. And this is the very same Spirit that my church is built out of, and that's who you are. I convey the blessing of the Lord. I convey a blessing of God on you. I come to you in the fullness of the blessing of Jesus Christ. I come to you to make an announcement today that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which temples you are. He wants to dwell in you. He wants to do the unreasonable, the unfathomable, the unthinkable, the unseen, the unknown. And that's why he created boundaries. So when you go beyond them, you know it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by your spirit, but, but your spirit did it through me. It's not by my ability to figure it out or to dig forward or to work forward or to try forward. Or... You're beyond my question. So my question doesn't matter. So my affirmation is the only thing that matters. The conclusion is, if God be for me, who can be against me? Everything, all things, are subservient to you. Everything. Everything. But if you doubt it, lifelessness, powerlessness, hopelessness 
will lead you. If you believe that conditions, the conditions of being able to figure it out, the conditions of being able to understand it, to put it together, is where your joy is, then you've just lost your joy. Because your joy is unexplainable. Your peace is beyond imagination. Exceeding, abundant, and beyond all that you know how to ask or think. Today, today, not five minutes from now, right here, right now, Today, God is doing a wonder in you. Today, right here, this very moment, I command a blessing to fall on you. I command the blessing of the Lord's health, His strength, His peace, His joy, His direction, His insight, His understanding. I convey a blessing on you. I command the blessings of the Lord on you. He said, bless, this is what you were called to do that a blessing might come on you. That's the way it works. The Word says Jesus came, and He came to get something. He came to get you. He came with the intentions that He knew if He sowed the seed in the earth that God had made to be experienced by faith, that He gets you. Not the you you know, the you God knows, the image of the Father. That Christ gets to go back, and with all the sons of God in heaven and earth, he gets to say, look and see who God is. See the Redeemer. You've never known him as Redeemer, Savior. You've never known him as Savior, Healer. You've never known him in these ways. You've never known him as the Lord of all. All death, hell, the grave, and sin. Sin had them bound. You've never known him as the Lord above sin, but you do today because the word has come. You've never known death to be canceled, but today it's canceled. You've never known eternal life to be shared where you could walk in the fullness. You've always known a divide between humanity and God. No eye has seen angelic or earthly. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared. But what is he ministering to heaven through? You. The Word became you and dwelt among us. And we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and glory. And we looked at him but we couldn't, we couldn't know him. We looked at him. We looked in his face. We watched him do things no one's ever done. The dead got up and walked away. The blind saw. The deaf heard. If God had only healed me, I'd believe. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Because if by reason you believe, you'll unreason yourself out. But if you see by faith, you'll not doubt and you'll not pout. Because he's revealed. He's only revealed through his word. And that's who he sent. And that's who we celebrate. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. And his name is called Mighty Counselor. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, He is the God of your eternity. And He's made you the chosen through whom He's going to make Yourself known. And this is the greatest season of your life. Merry Christmas. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Would you stand with me? Father, we praise you and we thank you for this incredible season of time. We thank you for the power and the authority of your word. Christ within us, the hope of glory. We stand in the dawn of a season, a new time, because we have become renewed in how we see, how we understand, how we live because we believe 
Father, the work through Christ that was done was that he put to death the consciousness that needed an example. And you're it. And it couldn't be seen with eyes, could touch, could handle, and still it wasn't enough. When Thomas touched your hands, when he looked at you and he said, now I see, you said to him, it's not enough. You believe because you've seen, but you really don't know me. Blessed are those who have not seen, and they know how to believe. They know me. They see me. Father, I command a blessing on everyone in the house, those that are viewing. The blessing of the Lord that gives you peace to pursue everything that God is about to put in your heart. The seeds that He's sown there, they're still seeds to be alive. The power of His Word, your age cannot defy it. Your inabilities cannot defy the Word of God. They're far too weak because He is beyond reasoning. He is unreasonable, beyond the ability to reason. Your resources, your funds, what you did or didn't save, what you do or don't have, what you do or don't own, cannot defy the work God is doing. Just believe. And doubt not in your heart. Just believe. Commit yourself to believe. Be glad when you can't explain it. And the mind that's believing is beyond explanation. I, I, what'd you say? You don't know how sausage is made, but I don't know what that means, but it sounds good to me. I don't know, but I believe it. I believe Matt doesn't know how sausages are made. God said, when you can't, when you, we can't figure it out, when it doesn't make sense and you don't know, then you'll know when you believe. I just, I don't know. Mm. How? And that out of you come, I know who you are. You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. What's happening to me? I'm born again. I'm born of the Spirit. I do know. I do know. I know that my Savior ever lives. I know that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and that if I believe in Him, I have everlasting life. And the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. And I have the blessing in this life as well as that which is to come. I do know. And I can tell you today, I don't know how I know other than it's the word of the Lord. His word has made me alive. You're made out of his word. And God did it again when he created Christ. He said he he has to come and he has to be a man. And one day he's going to come. He's going to be in a garden and he's going to say, Father, If this cup can pass from me, please. And then it happened. Nonetheless, not my will. Your will be done. That's where victory happened right there. And that's your victory right there. You have the greatest offering, the most valuable offering you will ever bring. Your will. And that's why he said when you pray, pray this way. Your kingdom come, your will, not my will. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Because when heaven shows up here, it looks different than it does up there. And all of the host of heaven, as they did when Jesus was born, say glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace has come. Good will to men. This is that hour. This is that season. And Father, we thank you for it. Father, I thank you for something brand new happening before the close of this year. Before the close of the year. 
So as we step into the new year, we step in not just with expectation, but with an understanding by the Spirit. God, you're doing something through me. God is doing something through you today. I command a blessing on you. God has sent me here tonight to command a blessing on you. To tell you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're exactly right for God to do everything He wants to do in the earth and in heaven. You're exactly the right picture. You're the right taste. You're the right height. You're the right weight. You're the right sound. You're the right voice. You have the right color eyes. You have the right color hair or bald head. Whatever it is, is just right. God made you exactly right to do exactly right through you. And I command a blessing on you. The blessing of this season of the Lord's fullness. A Christmas blessing on you. And I give you tonight the first gift ever wrapped. Jesus Christ. First Christmas gift ever wrapped. And revealed by the Father. Merry Christmas to you all. And to all a good night.